Thank you. <laughs> that was nice. <laughs> we grew up sharing everything. We were given the same gifts on our shared birthday, and we were very frequently called by each other's name. But it didn't really bother us. We were best friends, and each other's genetic identical. People always ask what it's like to be a twin. I usually just say that I don't know how life would be any other way. But what I really mean is I can't imagine it any other way. Lindsay, being the more outgoing one, was always trying to get me to embark on new adventures with her, like running to the top of the Sandia Mountains. Because I guess that's supposed to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> She encouraged me to be a better version of myself. She'd ask, Alex, what would you do if you weren't scared? Hey, Linz, does this count? <laughs> I hope it does. <laughs> When we were 13, Lindsay was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, an autoimmune disease where the immune system cannot differentiate between healthy and dangerous cells. Her body, in effect, was attacking itself. There is no cure for ulcerative colitis, just many different drug treatments to help manage the symptoms. And she managed to keep the disease in remission with these many different, different treatments for a little over 10 years. When one treatment stopped working, she'd move on to something more powerful until there was nothing left to move on to. While in the hospital, with a weakened immune system, she contracted a bloodstream infection. Blood culture identification and resistance testing has always been the leading technology for diagnosing infections like the one she acquired. In the medical field, it's referred to as the gold standard detection method, but it has many limitations. It is not time or cost effective. It lacks sensitivity and specificity, and it relies heavily on laboratory scientists' expertise for proper analysis, potentially compromising diagnosis. It can take days to get results back from blood culture analysis, and these patients don't have days to spare. So broad-spectrum antibiotics are often prescribed. Broad-spectrum antibiotics work by destroying a wide range of the body's microbial environment, sacrificing the good microbes in hopes of also killing the bad. But when the body's microbial balance is disturbed like this, it is left extremely vulnerable to secondary infections, caused by drug-resistant microorganisms. So we waited for Lindsay's culture results, and many days passed. She was switched from one antibiotic treatment to another, chasing increasingly dangerous infections that hadn't yet been diagnosed, chasing a best guess. The surges of infection-fighting chemicals released into her system to fight these persistent infections caused a severe whole-body inflammatory response called sepsis. Once a patient starts showing signs of sepsis, it can very quickly spiral out of control, triggering biochemical reactions that can lead to organ failure. Blood pressure will drop irreversibly, and in up to half of all sepsis diagnoses, the patient will die. In the United States, more people die from sepsis than from prostate cancer, breast cancer, and AIDS combined. And with underdeveloped diagnostic technologies and the increasing impact of drug-resistant organism spread, deaths from sepsis will continue to rise. So what can be done to alter this frightening state and future that we're facing? What if we could capture pathogens directly from blood? without having to rely on blood cultures to tell us how to treat the patients. At DNA Electronics, we have developed a pathogen capture system that uses magnetic nanoparticles coated with immune response proteins. These special proteins, called antibodies, are created naturally by our bodies to fight infection. When an infection enters your system, a cascade of cellular reactions occur to trigger the production of antibodies that bind to these invasive species and tag them for destruction. 
They're like the police dogs of the immune system, trained to seek out and latch on to the bad guy. With these antibody-coated beads, we are able to capture pathogens directly from blood, that is, without using blood cultures. This system uses one-third of the blood volume required for a complete blood culture workup, and it takes a fraction of the time. First, the antibodies bind to the pathogen. They're captured. And then they're concentrated and ruptured to release the genetic material. Then, by using our genetic identification technology, we are able to specifically determine the pathogen or pathogens infecting the patient in hours, not days. From sample to DNA on a simple benchtop platform. From DNA to diagnosis on this tiny device. Compared to other molecular detection platforms that contain cameras and robotics and lasers, this is truly revolutionary. A faster diagnosis will enable physicians to immediately prescribe targeted, effective antimicrobials instead of broad-spectrum antibiotics. It's like hiring a sniper instead of deploying a nuke. This will help to slow the process of drug-resistant organism spread and reduce the likelihood of bloodstream infections developing into sepsis. My sister's weight plummeted and her muscles had atrophied so much that by the time she was finally able to start walking, a simple stroll around the hospital exhausted her more than the marathon she used to run. Remember, half of the people who received the diagnosis she received don't survive. I'm very fortunate to say that today she's healthy and... <laughs> and successful, and she's even here today. So yay! <laughs> I would love to say that witnessing my sister regain her life after sepsis is what motivated me to pursue a career in medical diagnostics, but it was a little less Lifetime movie-esque than that. <laughs> it was more my fascination with the unseen world surrounding me. On a human level, and on a microbe level. When I work with clinical samples from actual sick patients, a part of me feels connected to them. I think about what they're going through and what their families are going through. I think about what my sister went through. I imagine how, if better diagnostic techniques were available, these patients could already be recovering. This is what drives me as a research scientist working toward breaking the blood culture barrier and developing a faster, more accurate technology to diagnose bloodstream infections. Sepsis is one of the leading causes of death worldwide and the single most expensive condition to treat in the United States. It's time for a new gold standard. Woo!